Happy New Year to you all. Happy New Year. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, I don't usually put a lot of stock in dreams, but um, early this morning I uh, had this dream that I was preaching to a large number of people, and then I woke up. I, I hope that you don't have the same experience as I'm preaching today that you then wake up. <laughs> but uh, as I was preaching in this dream, I remember very vividly this, this fire coming up in my heart and saying, trying to tell people, we're all made for greatness. Every single person here was made for greatness. And yet, too often, we live in mediocrity. And that's when I woke up. And we look and we say, but despite the fact that that was, that was a dream, there's truth to this. Very often we live, well, rather mediocre lives. But we're all called to greatness. God didn't make any one of us to be mediocre. He made all of us to be great. But we don't take the steps that we need to be great. And you know, it's New Year's, so usually people come up well, with all these New Year's resolutions. But so often, it's just about, you know, our physical being. You know, I want to, you know, exercise more, eat fewer calories, stop eating the sugar, whatever it may be, you know. And then we what? We get a gym membership, and we go to the gym uh, maybe three times, and then we keep paying for that gym membership, for several months before we realize, you know, I haven't used this since January 3rd. Um, <laughs> and we finally just cancel the membership, even though, you know, for months we've been saying, well, I'll get there, I'll get there, I'll get there. And the Lord is saying, I want something more from you. He wants something more from me. That He wants us to strive after that greatness for which we were made. And that greatness isn't necessarily going to be seen as great by the world, but rather that greatness where we become the saints we're called to be. We're in the midst of this Eucharistic revival, and so one of the things that I was thinking about would be an incredible thing for us to do for part of our greatness, is if we don't do this on a regular basis, making a commitment putting it on our calendar, one day a week, to come and spend 15 minutes before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. 15 minutes before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament will change our lives. If we haven't spent time before our Lord before, it will change our lives. Whether that's coming on a Wednesday when we have adoration from 8.30 to 9.30 or from 2 to 9 p.m. Or whether it's uh, coming uh, in the morning before daily Mass when we have adoration at 6.30 a.m. until about 7.40 when we're done the rosary. Or whether it's coming to our chapel back here which is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And you know, it's a beautiful thing. I love coming. There's always someone that comes in at 10 o'clock. He's out, you know, I'm... Any day of the week, I, I look out and there, there's his car. Okay, he comes and spends time with the Lord. Other people throughout the day, they'll come and they'll just come in and visit our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. But when we spend time with the author of life, he gives us direction for our lives. Can we not spend 15 minutes? I'm not saying about spending a holy hour, although that would be great. I do that every day and have since I was in uh, a seminary. But spending 15 minutes, that's less than a, a, a sitcom run. Can we spend that time with our God? You know, in the second reading today, we hear St. Paul saying, God has sent us a spirit of, of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. He's inviting us into that intimate relationship. And today as we celebrate Mary, the mother of God, she is mother of God, and it shows us, of course, because she's not the mother of His divinity, or the mother of God, the Father, or mother of God, the Holy Spirit. She is mother of God, the Son, in His humanity. But because she's mother of a person, it's more than just a biological relationship. It's about this full relationship where she is mother to Him, the person who is God. 
But then she's also mother of the church. She's mother to each of us. And as mother, she so longs for us to enter into that intimate relationship with the divine. That person knows it. <laughs> Exciting to be able to spend time with Almighty God. We think about some celebrity that we might uh, look up to, whether it's in the music or in politics, although politics really, um, or whether it's music or politics or in the movies or TV. If, if we had an opportunity to spend 15 minutes with that person, where they gave us their undivided attention, would we not jump at that opportunity? Almighty God, who is more important than any celebrity, says, I want to spend time with you. I want to spend time with you. And like Anna and the king, he says, getting to know you, getting to know all about you. That's all it is. So the Lord just wants for us to get to know him to get to know his love. And Mary, our mother, will walk with us in that process, taking us by the hand to get to know our Lord. So I ask you, what are you going to do this year? What resolution have you made? Is it going to be just something that's going to be some temporal thing, or are you going to do something that will change your eternity? This is the most important thing we can do, is to change our eternity. It's to spend our time getting to know the one who so longs to be with us forever. Our God and Lord, the lover of our souls, our creator, the one who has said, I made you for myself. <laughs>